Hey, what's up guys, this is Mario, back again with another YouTube video. Today I'm a super excited, super happy. I am wearing my Super Mario hat. I wear this when I'm super happy. And guess what? Tesla just announced that they bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. Now where are all my Bitcoin haters at? Where are you at? They forgot about Dre. Shout out to all my Dr. Dre fans and Eminem fans. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, guys, huge news all across the board. All the Bitcoin stocks, Bitcoin, it's moving huge. Bitcoin up over 10% today. I'm going to go over the technical analysis of that. I'm also going to go over the technical analysis of, of Tesla. Also, the, the SEC filings uh, where they disclose that information. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to find that information. Um, and I'm going to talk about it. I did end up buying more Tesla. Uh, and you guys all, all, all know I am actually also invested in Bitcoin. And guess what? I'm not gonna buy. I'm gonna buy more Bitcoin, guys. Obviously, you know. So uh, I do buy Bitcoin in a dollar cost average strategy. I mentioned that already in my videos. Uh, now I'm also gonna go over Zoom. Uh, I did buy some more of that stock as well, based on fundamental and technical analysis. So all that stuff, guys, gonna be disclosed today on this video. So don't forget to ask questions down below, guys. Let me know what you guys think on the YouTube comments. Also, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe down to the channel down below. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right, guys. So obviously, um, you know, check out the Bitcoin chart. Uh, this is the Bitcoin future chart. Uh, pretty much coincides with the, uh, the Bitcoin uh, uh, trend. Uh, huge move, huge volume coming in, especially here in the futures exchange. Uh, there's uh, definitely some open interest in the area. Uh, Bitcoin is making a move, broke to all-time highs. Now we're talking about it made a high of 45,000. Uh, just looking at the volume based of technical analysis, looking at the trend, uh, I could see this hitting 50,000 pretty soon, guys, pretty soon. Now, um, I also want to mention uh, really quickly, guys, uh, again, I do keep getting a lot of messages from family and friends. Where can I get Bitcoin? all this stuff all the time. So again, I'm gonna mention it again. This is my Coinbase affiliate link. Uh, you guys can see right here. I will post that down below on the YouTube description if you guys are interested. Now, pretty much if you guys do use this link and you guys open an account with Coinbase and if you guys buy or sell $100 more crypto, you will receive $10 worth of free Bitcoin. And I will also get some as well. Again, ask any questions down below in the YouTube comments. Again, the link will be posted down below in the YouTube description, guys, okay? So again, the, in terms of the, the trend, it's definitely there. Huge volume, open interest in the futures contracts. In Bitcoin, that is very, very bullish sign in terms of the technical side. Again, Tesla just bought $1.5 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin, and here it is. Tesla, here's a CNBC News. Tesla buys $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. And not only that, but they're actually planning to accept it as payment to buy their Tesla cars. That is huge. That is huge. Uh, if you guys seen some of the videos of uh, Overstock.com, they already accept Bitcoin to buy their product or furniture. Uh, I'm going to post a video up top so you guys will see that. You guys get, can uh, learn more about that. Again, I posted that video last week. So moving on, uh, let's look at uh, Tesla and what's happening with Tesla stock. Tesla is up over 1% on that news. Uh, and again, also a lot of the, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Bitcoin stocks like, like Riot, which is a Bitcoin miner, or, you know, uh, let me just kind of post it really quick. That one's up like almost 40%, actually, you guys can see that. I also actually talked about this stock in one of my videos, uh, which I will also post on top, you know, if you guys are interested in seeing that. Uh, huge volume as well on that. So, I mean, this looks really, really good. Uh, but mostly what I'm going to talk about is Tesla because I did end up buying more Tesla stock today. Now, Tesla's been in a range between 900 and 800. Uh, the trend is still intact. Uh, the news that uh, Tesla's buying uh, bought Bitcoin and is looking to accept Bitcoin as form of payment to buy their cars, to sell their cars, it's huge news. Uh, as long as Bitcoin uh, seems to trend, uh, Tesla is going to go with it now. So Tesla is going to become one of those Bitcoin stocks as well, too. So when Bitcoin is moving, guess what's going to move? Tesla. So that is my fundamental reason. Now, to kind of go over the SEC funds, because this was not announced under press releases. It was actually disclosed under, under, under uh, SEC 10K uh, uh, filing. 
Uh, now, the SEC, I'm sure you guys heard of the Security and Exchange Commission. These are the guys who regulate all publicly traded companies. They have to file specific uh, uh, filings, regulations related to the laws re regarding uh, public companies. And all you have to do is go to their website, you know, SEC.gov uh, slash Edgar. Here, the company profile, very simple. Just type in the ticker symbol TSLA. And of course, that's Tesla. Now, this is the most recent 10K filing, their annual report, their whole year annual report. Very, very important. I highly recommend to, to read these guys. And again, it was posted today on, uh, yep, December 8th. That's today. And uh, let's take a look at it. So here it is. Let's open it up. It's in this HTM uh, form document. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend you guys, if you guys are huge fans of Tesla, and you guys are investing in Tesla, read these. These annual reports are so important, especially if you're a long-term investor. But let's kind of, um, you know, let's kind of pick it back really quick and, and go over to uh, the Bitcoin stuff. So I am gonna do control fine and I'm gonna just keep it very simple. And I'm just gonna press, uh, I'm gonna type Bitcoin. Oh, and there you go, there you go, there it is. So let's take a look at it. So. Pretty much according to this, uh, in January 21, we updated our investment policy to provide us with more flexibility to further diversify and maximize returns on our cash that is not required to maintain adequate operation liquidity. As part of this policy, which was, uh, which was uh, duly approved by the audit committee of our board of directors, we may invest a portion such cash in certain alternative reserve assets, including digital assets, gold billion, gold exchange, traded funds, and other assets as specified in the future. Thereafter, we invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin under this policy and may acquire and hold digital assets from time to time or long term. Moreover, we ex expect to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment right here for our products in the near future. Here it is, guys, near future. Uh, subject to applicable laws and initially limited basis, which we may be offered liquid up and receive. Again, <laughs> where are all the, the Bitcoin haters at, guys? Where are they at? Where are you guys at, man? Talking all the smack, but now, hey, now what's up? Nothing to say, huh? Nothing to say. So moving on, guys, moving on, guys. So again, guys, uh, this is huge news, um, you know, uh, not only did, are they invested in Bitcoin, and now one thing I want to mention, guys, in terms of what's, what's really happening, uh, there's a lot of uh, companies in the S&P 500 who have millions, if not billions of dollars, just sitting in cash, doing absolutely nothing, is not invested anywhere. A lot of these companies like to invest in treasuries, U.S. treasuries, or in, you know, low, low risk bonds, but because the yield is so so low because of the Federal Reserve has lower interest rates at historically low low interest rates. Uh, a lot of this cash is literally not getting any return. So big corporations like Tesla and many others, which I do see more coming, this is going to be the open up the floodgates. I could see a lot of more S&P 500 companies putting their cash reserves in Bitcoin. It just makes sense. It just absolutely makes sense. Uh, you know, why will you keep your cash reserves in cash and not reserve and not, not re have a return in invest? If anything, lose money based on inflation because over time your cash loses value based on inflation. A lot of them are going to start putting their money in Bitcoin, and Tesla is going to be the leading company to do that. Uh, so that's that's definitely very very important, guys. That's the reason why I'm super bullish on Bitcoin, not only Bitcoin but also Tesla. And hey, in the next couple of weeks and months, I really believe we're going to hear more companies in the S and P S and P 500 putting some of their cash reserves in Bitcoin. Okay. All right, so moving back to uh, the, the, the uh, chart, the technical analysis. Again, there is this range that has been trading between 900 and, and 800, 900 and 800. Uh, so let, let me, I did kind of already write some, uh, some technical analysis, some levels right here. So I think once it breaks 900, which I think it will, as long as the S&P 500 is trending, as long as the NASDAQ is trending, I think this could eventually uh, hit a thousand. So again, Tesla is a long-term investment, guys. I've been holding this company for the last three years, and I've been absolutely happy as an investor. I believe in the company. I believe in their products. I believe in the electronic vehicle sector. So that's the reason why I'm a big believer, and that's the reason why I added more, especially because it bought Bitcoin. I am a huge fan of Bitcoin. 
not only fan, but investor, long-term investor as well. I've been investing for a while as well. So uh, there you have it. Now, uh, moving on. Now what I'm going to go over and want to talk about is uh, Zoom. Now, I also bought some more Zoom stock today. I also invested in Zoom stock. And there's a lot of reasons why. The technical and fundamental. So technical, um, you know, going over what's happening, you know, one of the things that uh, what I like to do, especially companies that do like, I do like to buy them in, uh, around the 200-day uh, moving average, which I did buy in Zoom Ad. Uh, now, it did kind of trend and it hit the 50-day moving average as a resistance level, and it finally broke above that. Uh, so on the technical side, that is very, very important. Now, and, and not, not only broke above it, but it broke above it with some huge volume, some pretty decent amount of volume. So uh, that's very, very important. So uh, in terms of the, the uh, more technical side, this 400 level was very, very important on the technical side. I'm looking at the intraday level, again, it broke up with a broke over 400 with a lot of volume. I did day trade it today, make some money in that as well. Uh, but the fundamental, you know, what is going on with the fundamental? Because absolutely very, very important. You know, I love to trade fundamentals combined with technical analysis. So as you guys know, the vaccine guys, as soon as the vaccine news with Pfizer and Moderna came out, pretty much Zoom just pretty much started to, you know, downtrend. And it made a lot of sense. You know, uh, Zoom was one of the stocks, one of the companies that benefited from the pandemic because everybody needed to work from home. People couldn't go to the office. So, hey. Everybody started using Zoom. It's, it's a no brainer. It made a lot of sense. And that's why the stock pretty much like, you know, since September, actually, uh, let me uh, do a two year chart. Pretty much since uh, March of uh, last year, it kind of like, like a double trip, actually four times, it literally four X, you know, 400 over 400% and not actually 500% at this peak over 500%, almost 600% its peak uh, since the pandemic. But of course, a lot of stock has kind of come down the stock is overvalued in terms of price per earnings ratio. So that is definitely uh, very important to keep in mind, guys. Uh, but the reason why, in terms of the fundamental, why I'm interested, especially now that, you know, we, the, the, the uh, vaccine is, is starting to work, the COVID cases are going down. Uh, what I really like about Zoom is they started to shift. They started to pivot their, their business plan, their business strategy. And that's the reason why I decided to buy more. Because I was actually kind of like nervous about it. Uh, so... Let's go over very well, very quickly. Uh, again, guys, Zoom investors relations. Uh, if you guys want to look at press releases, it's all there. Uh, you know, and, and I'm doing it right now so you guys can see it. So this is based on their recent or a press release. Zoom announces availability of Zoom rooms everywhere, workforce innovation. So Zoom continues to innovate and they have to because as soon as people start working uh, at, at, at the office, you know, Zoom does not want to lose those customers. They don't want to lose those, those users, you know, so they have to innovate. They have to change their game plan. So that's pretty much what they're doing. So pretty much uh, Zoom, you know, according to this press release, Zoom enhances, uh, Zoom rooms enhancements promote health and safety in the workplace. Uh, so pretty much Zoom today announced uh, in the general availability of Zoom rooms innovations that will help organizations safely re-enter the office and sustain an everywhere workforce, okay? That's huge, huge. So they wanna be part of that process of helping big companies re-enter the office, you know? And that's how they're gonna be able to maintain those clients, uh, you know, once we transition back to the office. So the traditional workforce has evolved, is adapted with employees, organizations embracing more places to work uh, as workplaces, whether it's an office, co-located space, remote location, or at home, Zoom platform enables organizations to put employees' health and safety at the center of their strategy. So very important. Um, uh, actually, uh, this is a very important, uh, you mentioned it, I think, believe the senior analyst mentioned. So clearly the office workspace, uh, workspace continues to change. In fact, more than 80% of employees working remote say they like to continue to work remotely, at least 50% or more once they return back to the office. And, and that makes absolute sense, guys. I don't really think, once we go back to the office, I don't really think, you know, 100% of people are just gonna go there. It's, it's, you know, I don't think that makes sense. That's actually kind of dangerous. Uh, so I really think that companies are gonna slowly transition because there's a huge, huge liability factor. You know, if somebody gets sick at the office from COVID, 
and something bad happens to them, you know, God forbid, you know, they die or something like that. Guess who's going to get sued? The companies are going to get sued. So, you know, they're going to look at this, uh, you know, companies are going to be very, very careful, you know, coming back. So, and again, Zoom is going to be that platform to help them do that. So, and again, this was said by uh, Craig Dorr, a senior analyst at uh, Windhouse Research. Uh, now, but to accomplish this, employees have to have, have healthy, safe, and secure conference rooms, experience that meets the needs of today's and emerging hybrid workforce. Zoom is well positioned to provide this. So Zoom is well positioned to provide these services for these large organizations. Uh, so huge, 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 very, very, very important, guys. Um, so, and, and not only that, but people want flexibility. Let's be honest, you know. Who does not want more flexibility to work from home? Not only work from home, but hey, have the ability to travel uh, and work from where you're traveling to. That's the future, guys. Let's be honest. That is the future. In the future of the Instagram, the social media, the YouTube, uh, you know, people want to be free. People want to have flexibility, and companies are going to have to meet that. Now, just a quick survey. Survey of 12,000 professionals, 60% employees said that they want flexibility where and when they work. Boom. And that's Boston Consulting. So the hybrid working model is going to be so important for a lot of companies. And I think that's going to be the next thing. You know, I really think, especially in the tech world, uh, in, in the Bay Area, they're already leading this charge. Uh, I believe uh, Twitter, I think they, they announced all their workforce will be remotely 100% of the time. Um, and there's other companies that have already done that. But this is going to show that more companies are going to have a hybrid approach, you know, part of work from home and part work from office. So pretty much uh, their strategy is to pair a Zoom room with mobile device devices, uh, view real time people count data, uh, monitor rooms environmentally in air quality. I thought this was pretty cool. So they, they come in with something to monitor a room's environment and air quality. So net net neat bar or net. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, but I'm going to say net bar. A room, a Zoom room's appliance includes an advanced set of capabilities called NeatSense, which lets you monitor your meeting rooms for things like air quality, humidity, CO2, and volatile organic compounds. Uh, so we're talking about COVID right here. <laughs> so volatile organic, organic compounds, most likely it's COVID, uh, to keep occupants safe and healthy. You can view this environmental data on Zoom dashboard, on the Zoom Rooms controller, and on the schedule display for real-time feedback and safety for our meeting rooms. This is huge. Now, they're also going to do virtual reception as kiosk mode, where it pretty much provides contact, contactless entry experience for building guests. This is huge. Um, uh, there's also a control shared desktop for, from Zoom uh, rooms to touch, and also they actually get a chance to see whiteboard for the chat. So this is huge, guys. So on the technical side, again, breaking above major resistance levels, not only the 50-day the moving average, close to 400, and we had some decent volume as well uh, yeah, the, uh, Friday. So I like that. Uh, now, the news actually did came, came out on the 3rd. So it looks like investors are starting to realize that, hey, if we do come back, it's really not just going to happen. Like right, everybody just go back to work right away. No, it's going to be a transition, guys. And I really believe Zoom is going to be the company to help all these large corporations help with that transition and, and also provide hybrid services where people could get a chance to work from home and also the office. And I think, to be honest, that's going to be the best way, especially in terms of the health of everybody. You can't just have everybody just go work at the office right away. So keep that in mind, guys. So, um, well, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something from this video. As a reminder, guys, I am not a financial advisor. All these videos are for learning and entertainment purposes. Again, guys, I do have provide a link down to my Coinbase uh, affiliate link. And again, guys, if you guys use that link and buy $100 or more of crypto, you guys will receive $10 of free Bitcoin, and I will also receive some. Now, don't forget to ask questions down below, guys, in the YouTube comments. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. And you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.